Thank you for joining uh, Game Gumshoes. This is Chris and Kid Gumshoe back from our Origins trip. And this is the Origins Hall. Uh, first, I'd like to start off with uh, something everybody at Origins had the opportunity to get. These are the Origins D12 or D6 dice. Uh, yeah, there's two of them here, so it is D12 worth of dice. But uh, yeah, nice little special ones. I've got the logo and the year on them. Uh, we got a couple of those for a friend of ours and ourselves. Um, let's go with uh, some of the smaller games first. Uh, the first ones, Kid, spot it. It's a uh, game Kid Gumshoe really wanted us to pick up. Grab it. That's right. Spot it. Now, in Spot It, it's kind of a Find It game. Um, let me pull a copy out. Each uh, card has pictures on it, and each of them uh, should match up as you go along. There should be no combination in which it shouldn't go. Now, this is just a sample pack. The actual uh, tin comes with 60 cards. Uh, as you can see, there's also a Major League Baseball set. Uh, an NFL or NHL set for your hockey fans, and then these other three games are also from Blue Orange. Uh, that's Tell Tales, where you actually tell a story with the cards, and Trigger, where you tell truth and um, and lie questions, and all you have to do is tap uh, the little trigger that they give you in the tin that you buy. Uh, next game would be Amorica. It is a card game that pits two to four players to get resources before the winter harvest. Um, it's Romans and Gauls, and in this particular case, uh, we found this game because we were checking out a game called Hibernium. Um, if you like Risk and would like to be able to get your small children involved in Risk and playing with you, uh, check out uh, Vainglorious Games, and they have the uh, Hibernia there, and you can also get it... Um, uh, contact us for uh, information. We'll, we'll get that to you. But uh, Hibernia is a good uh, gateway game for Risk. So if you want to get your children involved in Risk, good starter spot. Vain, uh, Amorica, uh, Vainglorious Games. Uh, next, let's go with a, a good company that we've had a, a nice history with. This is Moustache Games' is, uh, Hike. It's one of two hiking games, one of three camping games we found out at uh, Origins. Uh, this one is for ages 7 and up. Uh, three to eight players, and uh, the nice thing is each of the cards are really simple, so you could probably go even lower than seven um, if you wanted to teach a kid how to match up colors and shapes, and very easy to play. Like I said, we played at a restaurant as soon as we got a copy of it. Uh, so look into Hike, Moustache Games, they're the makers of Rowboat. You may have seen our review in the past. Uh, next, the other hiking game. It's called Take a Hike. It's from Stratamax Games. It claims to be six and up, uh, two to five players. Um, what you want to do is you want to collect things for your backpack, and uh, then you go out hiking and hope that you don't get attacked by the skunk or the, uh, the raccoons or get blisters on your feet or what's the other thing? It's bears, isn't it? Yeah, you don't want to get eaten by the bear. But fun game for the family, especially if your kids love to beat up on dad or mom and say, Ooh, I'm going to send a bear after you. Hey, did right. Yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, let's go with Scavengers. It's the other camping game. It's from Zombie State Games. Uh, they recommend 10 and up because there is some reading involved with the cards. It's two to four players, and basically you're animals trying to scavenge food from three different campsites, and you're all competing to get the food to complete your uh, menus that you have on the side of your, uh, well, on the side of your board. Plain and simple. The thing I like about this game, little teeny tiny board. And it drew her attention, and she was like, Dad, let's go find out about this game. So, scavengers. Like I said, Zombie State Games, there'll be links at the bottom of the uh, review. That way you can find these games again. Uh, next will be Quiddler, Sep, and Exactica. These three games, you want to hold one? Yay! So these three games are from Set Enterprises. Um, you can uh, view their games on the website. They also have five crowns. Um, they have set cubes, 
and they're going to have a set junior coming out soon in July, I think they said it was. Um, we'll get more reviews on these later when we actually sit down and do the review on these games. Um, let's see, next. Let's go with Zombie in My Pocket and Glory to Rome. Now, these both from uh, Cambridge Game Factory. Uh, they're very simplistic. Uh, as you can see, they have like a clamshell container that makes them you know, easy to get around to, easy to carry around. Uh, and it cuts down on the cost, so you get your games a little bit cheaper than you normally would. Kind of in the vein of, uh, well, cheap-ass games. Um, don't know much about this game, haven't got a chance to play it yet, but we will give it a review a little bit later on. And Glory to Rome... The makers guarantee that this game is already broken. So we're going to figure out how a broken game is fun to play. Because they said it's awesome. This was actually one of Origin's nominees for best game. So hopefully we'll get to check that out and find out if it really lives up to the hype. Um, next. Okay, Holder of Secrets. Now the three of us got a chance to play it. I say three of us because you've got K behind the camera. Uh, this is Holder of Secrets. It's a spy game from Atomic City Games. Um, they say 12 and up, but I think you could probably go a little lower than that since you're just going numbers versus numbers in it. But in the game, you play spies, secret agents. You get your, um, get your uh, passports from different countries, and you're competing to uh, get 18 points worth of secrets. Uh, out of various countries, but we'll do a more thorough review for this a little bit later. Um, next, should we go with Would You Rather? Okay, Would You Rather and What's It Gonna Take are two party games from uh, Zamba, Saab, Mondo games. Um, would You Rather is their flagship game. Uh, this is the 13 and up. There is an actual full-scale adult version. Um, you could probably find this at your local big box. They also have a game that's got a bunch of dice in it that's golf oriented, plus they've got football, baseball, stuff like that. Don't have a copy of that to show you, unfortunately, just these two. Uh, would you rather put you in an option? You get to choose, would you rather do this or that? And you're questioning the other players to see if they believe that you would do this or that. Um, several different ways to play that game. Uh, what's it going to take is a four-player card game. It's got different segments on the back. And to me, I thought this was really interesting because it reminded me of the old uh, Klondike commercials. You know, what would you do? And you get offered money instead of a Klondike bar. So look for this game out in the store soon. Uh, you'll get a thorough review on this a little bit later. Um, unfortunately, uh, Chaos Castle or Chaosal, I, I don't have the actual game for. This is a revised rule set that I got from my local game store because I know I know that they have a big box. This thing retails for 70 bucks, but the pieces are solid pieces. The game board's solid, um, and it reminds me of a couple games I played in the past I really enjoyed. Uh, hopefully, uh, if they hadn't run out of these at Origins, I would have gotten a copy of it to take home and review and show you guys, but unfortunately this game sold out and this guy had stacks of these. So watch for this in a future review, hopefully I can get myself a copy in hand. Um, next game um, is Talk Talk Woodman. Um, the people we got it from at um, oh heck, uh, Mayday Games said that this is basically like a reverse Jenga. In it, you have a little tree, and each tree has little segments around the outside of it. And you get a little ax to chop into it and hopefully knock pieces loose and score. But if you knock out the core, you lose points. We'll review this a little bit further uh, later. Uh, hopefully Kid, uh, Kid Gumshoe will be able to help me out on this. Um, next, we have two square shooter dice games from uh, Heartland Games. This one's the adult version. This is the one you can play with the kids. This one's called Rodeo Rummy. 
Um, this is kind of a poker based game. It has specially patented dice in it to where unlike normal poker dice, this has every possible poker hand imaginable capable of being made with these dice. Um, and the rodeo dice, like I said, is just a kid version. Um, this also has eight different sets of rules in it, I do believe. And you will be able to look into it and play not only poker, but 21, rummy, you know, all kinds of card games. Uh, so that's an option for you. Um, next game I want to cover is a game called Mercs. It's a miniatures game, uh, Mercs Minis. Um, it comes in different factions. Different factions. Uh, this is just two of the possible five to six that are available now. From what I understand, they're going to max out at ten, so it won't be like normal mini games where you can constantly bombarded to have to buy new sets in order to keep playing. Um, this is the rule book, and from what we understand, these are completely and totally paintable miniatures, so you get to paint your army to look however you want it to look. And the movement thing is a lot like the one used in Pirates, but better. Um, in the old Pirates game, you had the possibility of someone saying, well, it looks like it's at the end of this. Well, in Mercs, the card is actually cut out on the front end and on the sides to where there's no question that this is where it would move in order to make its full movement. And you can reposition it depending on how you want it and it is always accurate to be in that particular spot. They even have grooves cut out in case you have to stand your card up on the side. But we'll review this further when we actually break out the minis and show you what they look like before they're painted, after they're painted, and when a game is in play. Next, we love the people at Gut Busting Games. Uh, they were one of the first people we reviewed a game for. Their main game was called Redneck Life. They were selling that at Origins. But this is one of their newer games. It's called Oh Gnome You Don't. Uh, in it, your little gnomes competing for gemstones uh, through here. And you can also attack your other fellow gnomes in order to steal their, their uh, gemstones. Now the thing is, you have um, little power cards where you can fight them. And they have things like atomic wedgies and and poke it in the eyes and buttheads. Buttheads, that's one of them. Okay, but you know, really fun game. Um, and of course, it came with a nice little sausage strap. So if you see them at uh, Gen Con this year, where they're going to be doing the um, oh, what was it? The trailer trailer park princess pageant, and um, they're also going to have a redneck Romeo contest where you can get a chance at a trophy and possibly $70 worth of credit towards games and such there. Um, and you can also pick up expansions for Redneck Life there that give you extra houses and, um, and vehicles because we know how important those are because they're all the time burning down, blowing up, and getting wrecked. Um, and that includes the houses. Um, Something K um, has a tendency to love are the miniatures. This particular one's from uh, Reaper's um, New Bones line. It's 10% recycled material. Um, this was in the paint and take booth. Um, if you got a chance to go over there, I'm pretty sure they'll probably have one at Gen Con as well. Uh, but you come up, you pick up your miniature, and uh, you sit down with their paints and paint them up. Uh, Kay will have a review on this because... Um, she does a lot of speed painting, and she she has pluses and minuses to this line because they're like flexible uh, material, and so she'll get to that later. Uh, next, come on. Go. Rise or fall. Rise or fall. It's it's the game of the clicks, where you, as each of these different clicks, uh, let's see, we've got cheerleaders, jocks nerds, uh, yeah, yeah, cool teachers, the goth people, the punk rockers. Uh, these are called artists. Um, we refer to them as fashionistas. Or hipsters. Or hipsters is the other term that they used on those. And then this guy down here, he's one of the skateboarder group. And I don't know if you saw this, but this was a convention exclusive. It is actually game designers. So it's got like Steve Jackson and a couple of the other guys that are involved in some of the major companies that are out there. I wish Andy Looney were on here, but, you know, he's not. So we just have to deal with that. 
Anyhow, you actually vie for popularity points. We will get around to reviewing this for you. I'm, I'm hoping that she'll actually get behind the camera and do this herself. Um, last thing I want to cover is a an RPG. Um, I know we don't do a lot of role-playing games, but this one here struck me as very interesting. You can buy it piecemeal, but the game pieces are interchangeable. This one's Coffins and Tombstones. It's by uh, Fearlight Games. Uh, this is their cowboy version. They're also going to do a Victorian Age uh, edition, as well as, um, you know, sci-fi um, stuff like that. So they've got the, the Ray Gun book, stuff like that. But uh, 22 of the pages are the actual rules. The rest of it is information on different NPCs you can use. Um, this little box here, I don't know if you can see it too well, but it includes little itty bitty playing cards that are used to determine certain things in the game. Uh, they produce these as well. Um, they're on a shoestring box shoestring budget. I, I love that kind of thing because, hey, we're on shoestring budget too. So we know what it's like to have to put out your own money to produce something you're hoping people will enjoy. The other thing they do are these hand-carved, hand-painted dice. Now, each of them are used for different things. Um, uh, defense, uh, damage, all kinds of different things. I'll review this further when I have like exact details because uh, I got a quick run through it Origins and it was kind of rushed because you know it was like the end of the con and everybody just wanted to go home. Everybody was tired. Uh oh, that's time to cut it. Uh, thank you. Uh, this was uh, Game Gumshoes, Chris and Kid Gumshoe. Have a pleasant day and we'll see you next time.